Howdy everyone, and welcome back to part two of the Beginner Hunter series. So in part two, we're going to discuss practice and preparation. But before I get into that, I just want to do a quick review of part one. So in part one, you decided where you're going to hunt, what you're going to hunt, and how you're going to hunt it. And you're making sure you're doing it safely and ethically. So now we're going to go into the hard work and preparing and practicing so that you're comfortable when the time comes for your hunt. So the first thing you want to do is find a place to practice. So I would just go on Google and, and find your local gun range or archery shop, look into the reviews, uh, make sure that they operate safely. I've seen a lot of places that people complain or comment on how unsafe it is run. And the last thing you want to do is when you go practice, somebody get hurt. So I would just make sure you look up the reviews, make sure you believe they run a good safe range also look up and see what they talk about the owner or the manager uh, that is there because they can be a good mentor and a good source of information. If you have any issues with your bow or your gun, you know, being a beginner, you don't always know how to work on your weapon of choice. And so that's something that can be a benefit of going to a range. They can teach you more about your gun, your bow, your sh your shotgun, whatever it is that you're using. And if, if something happens or you need some maintenance on it, they can show you how they do it. And so I mean, there's a lot of benefit of actually going out and finding somewhere. But if you live on a property and you can practice on your own, go for it. I think that's uh, the most economical way to do it. And that's the way I would prefer to do it. I actually shoot my bow in my backyard I can get out to about 30 yards safely, making sure I have a good backstop and nothing is gonna be behind the archery range. Make sure if you do that though, you look into your local ordinances because some counties, some cities don't allow you to do that. I'd hate for you to go out there and do it and get in trouble for it. So make sure that it's legal where you live if you're gonna shoot in your backyard. Once you find your place you're gonna practice at, you need to practice, practice, practice. I can't urge this enough because when you get into a real life situation, if you've been practicing, it's a breeze for you. If you haven't been, it's nerve wracking. You're questioning your abilities, your skill, and that's the last thing you need when you have an animal in front of you that you're trying to harvest. When you're practicing, I recommend practicing the way you're going to hunt. So for example, are you going to be in a tree stand? Are you going to be sitting? Are you going to be standing? Are you going to be laying? You know, practice all these different techniques so that when you get into that situation, you've done it before, you know what to do, you can do it quietly, and you're not uncomfortable doing it. You know, so if you're going to be putting a bipod or a shooting stick on your rifle, practice using that. You know, if, if you're not going to have a rest, practice freehand shooting. For your bow, you know, it's, I'll get up on a ladder in my backyard and practice shooting you know, on, on a five foot ladder just to get practice that angle and the elevation and, and getting comfortable with it. Or I'll pull a chair out and I'll sit down and I'll just take a couple of practice shots shooting on a chair because you never know what situation you're gonna be in. So you wanna practice how you're going to hunt. And another thing is a lot of people just practice at certain yardage marks. So, you know, if it's a 50 yard range, they'll practice at 50 or they'll go out and practice at 100 or if you're shooting a bow, you'll practice at 20, 30, 40, 50. You need to practice at all different ranges. A deer's not gonna walk out to you at 20 yards and go, hey, shoot me. You know, what happens when they're right below your tree stand and you're a five yard shot and you've never taken that? What site do you put it on? You know, what pin is it? So, so there's a lot of things you can do when you practice. And I think you just need to understand, like in video one, I mentioned, where are you going to hunt? You know, become familiar with it. So if you know you're gonna be in a tree stand, practice shooting out of a tree stand. Because I think the, the best thing you can do when it comes to hunt is make sure you're prepared for any situation that's gonna come up. And when you're prepared for any situation that comes up, it means you're gonna be comfortable taking a good, ethical, safe shot. The next topic I wanna to talk about is shot placement. This one kind of goes hand in hand with practice because when you're practicing, you can imagine where you're gonna shoot on the animal you plan on taking. So what I would do is go online and Google the vital V or Google the vitals on the animal you plan on taking and 
just look up where the best shot is to take. And there's a lot of information out there about, you know, broadside or quartering away shots. I would just do the research on the animal that you plan on hunting and make sure that you take ethical shots. Like for me, I don't think taking a shot at a deer's head or neck is ethical. You know, it may get you more meat in the long run, but my priority is to take an ethical shot shot and make a quick, clean kill. And in my opinion, that's at the heart and lungs. You have an eight inch window about on a deer with the heart and lungs, and you can miss by an inch or two and still make an ethical kill. If you're shooting at the neck and you miss by an inch or two, you barely nick it or miss it. That's just my opinion. You know, I, I'm not the best shot, but I don't think people always uh, are honest with how good of a shot they really are. So I, I recommend aiming at the heart and lungs and making sure you take good ethical shots. And when you're practicing, you know, if you're, if you're practicing archery, you know, get a life-size deer, or get a life-size hog or something up there that has a spot where the vitals are so you can practice actually shooting at what you're going to hunt. I, I think, again, practicing and knowing where you're going to place your shot is the best thing you can do in making a good ethical kill. So the next thing I want to talk about is practicing getting into your hunting setup. How are you going to enter your stand? Is it a ladder or is it stairs? Are you just in a pop-up blind? You want to make sure you can enter it safely and quietly. So I, I would practice doing that. I know it seems dumb and something you probably don't want to practice, but I can't tell you how many times I've walked into a stand and there's already been a deer there and I forget that the door closes harder than it does and it makes a loud racket and the deer is gone and then nothing comes back. I highly recommend practicing, you know, doing that. Also, if you're going to be hunting in a tree, you know, if you don't practice, you're not going to be able to do it safely or comfortably. If you're going to be hunting in a saddle or on a hang on tree stand or anything like that, I urge you to practice a lot on climbing the tree, getting into the stand, sitting there and just waiting there and almost doing a practice hunt just so you fully understand and are comfortable with the setup you have. Like this year, I planned a public hunt in a saddle. And honestly, I've never been in a tree stand. So I've been practicing on trees in my backyard. I plan on going out to some public land and practicing on trees out there. But you're going to be hunting and getting in and out of your stands when it's dark out. So you need to practice when it's you know, light daylight, or you need to practice and get very comfortable in the daylight so that it's, you know, just repetition and it's easy when it comes time to the hunt and you've got to get into your stand. I think one of the biggest causes of accidents in hunt in hunting is uh, safety with getting in and out of your stands. So I recommend, you know, wear your harnesses, wear your tethers, make sure you're attached to a tree, uh, make sure you're as safe as possible when it comes to getting in and out of your stand. So I know this, this next item is going to be something that's probably overlooked by most people. But I recommend finding your local processor and taxidermist because the last thing you want to do is go out there and, and harvest an animal and then go, oh crap, what now? You know, you, you want to make sure you've done your research on your processor that people enjoy the meat they uh, provide you know, it's not too salty, it's not too sweet, it's not, you know, that it's a good meat and they, they're trustworthy. So I recommend, you know, if you have a mentor that they give you recommendations on finding a good processor. I do recommend going to a processor for your first time hunting. I plan on processing my own meat this year and, and we'll show some videos on that. It, it's much cheaper, I think, to do it yourself if you plan on hunting for a long time. But given that it's your first hunt and you don't know if you're going to be hunting for years to come or you're just going to hunt that year and you didn't enjoy it, you just want to make sure that you probably go to a processor and just pay them and, and get what you want and they'll do a good job. And then finding a taxidermist, you know, if you come across that buck or something you want to be able to mount, you don't, you've got to be able to get that to a taxidermist pretty quickly. And the last thing you want to do is, you know, on your way home, start trying to research what's a good taxidermist, where are they located, 
those are two items I think are commonly overlooked when it comes to beginning uh, hunting. And so I recommend finding a good taxidermist and butcher ahead of time so that when you do have a successful hunt and you do harvest an animal, that you're prepared and you know what you're going to do afterwards. How do you plan on getting the animal out of the woods? Are you going to just drag it out? You know, are you a mile or two deep and you're going to drag it out two miles? You know, it's going to take a while. Or are you right next to the side of the road and you can just drag it out to your car and pick it up? You know, does where you're hunting allow ATVs or four wheelers so that you can grab it? You know, these are all things that I think you need to think about because you may have to gut it in the field and, and quarter it and put it in some game bags and carry it out. You know, so I would definitely think about where you're hunting and what they allow and how you're going to get the game out of the field. And again, sometimes this is just going to be trial and error. You may think, yeah, I can, I can drag it. You know, that's not a big deal. And you do that once or twice and you realize it's a pain. And, and so the next time you go buy a cart and you can, you know, wheel it out. So I think you, you know, you start with one method in mind and, and you'll probably end up changing it a few times. But I, as long as you're thinking about it, I think you're going in the right direction. So the next thing I want to talk about is your backpack. You want to make sure you have everything you need in your backpack for a hunt. Whether you're going alone or with a friend, you know, you want to make sure you have a first aid kit. You know, if there's going to be snakes, maybe a snake bite kit extra batteries, an external charger for your phone, snacks, water. You know, you, you've got to think about some of these items that you're planning for. So, you know, you may go in and hunt starting at 4 p.m. and it's a little warm, but you're walking out at, you know, 7 p.m. and it's now 20 degrees outside. So, you know, do you need extra layers or are you going in and it's going to be cold and then it's going to get hot and you need to peel layers off and put them somewhere? So these are all things you got to think about when you're packing a backpack. I actually created a checklist for myself, whether I'm on public or private, what I plan to bring on each property. And I, I think you should do something similar. I mean, I'm kind of OCD and I like having lists. So everything I do is on Excel and in a list. But it, it's good to have one. And there's a lot of lists online. So you could Google one or you know shoot me an email at zemanoutdoors13 at gmail.com. And I can send you what I have and, and you can just cater it to what you're going to be hunting and where you're going to be hunting. So I highly recommend preparing and knowing what's going to be in your backpack, making sure you have your knife, safety, first aid kit, those types of things. Bug spray. I, I think a lot of people don't think bugs are going to be a big deal, but trust me, if you go out and bow hunt in October, you're going to have mosquitoes and bugs all over you in Texas. Those are all things I think you really need to just think about and make sure you pack each and every time. And so I think making a checklist and being able to go through that each time you're getting ready to hunt is probably the best way to do that. So that's all I had for part two. If you had any questions or if you had anything that you thought I missed or think I should add, please leave a comment or shoot me an email. I'm more than happy to, to add to this or discuss in more detail with you if you want to. And if you're interested in like the series so far, part three will be coming out next week. And I'm going to be talking about scouting and what you need to look for and some of the things I do when I go scouting, whether it be on public or private property. So if you enjoyed this and you're interested in my next videos, please subscribe. As always, thank you.